Hey, how's it going? I am Pastor Mike, and I am glad you are joining us today for our digital service. However, you're viewing this content, so glad that you are with us. Hey, I just want to let you know a couple things. First of all, our website, goodhope.ag, has all kinds of wonderful information on it, ways that you can participate with the ministries of the church uh, at a distance, and it also has information on ways to connect with us here live and in person. So go check that out, find out what's going on with that. I also want to let you know that today, being the first weekend of the month, is our time for receiving Holy Communion together. So if you would like to gather some communion supplies, uh, bread and juice, then uh, you will have elements for receiving Holy Communion. And uh, also, if you would like to receive some of these self-contained communion elements, shoot me an email, pastormike at goodhope.ag, and we'll ship you out some communion elements. We've had people actually requesting that now. So very excited about that and excited to be receiving communion with you, whoever's uh, requested the elements. And so thank you for doing that. It makes me feel good that we have people participating uh, all around out there through our digital service. So excited about that. Hey, let's take some time and worship the Lord. I don't want to worry about all the things going on in life, and I just want to set that aside for a while, rest in my heart and my spirit, and focus on the goodness of God. So let's worship the Lord. Truly, Lord, nothing is better than you. We just thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done. We praise your name. We worship you, and we just surrender to you today.
we surrender all to you. Hey, it's good to worship the Lord. Amen. Now we go on to our one minute blessing. Every service we pray together because when God's people pray, it moves the hand of God and it changes the heart of the people who pray. And this coming week on Tuesday, I'll be flying out to Jamaica and I'll get to spend some time with my friends at the New Vision Children's Home. And I want to pray for the ministry that's going on there. This is a, uh, it's a children's home. So in Jamaica, what that means is it's kind of like, uh, foster care and an orphanage and uh, any kind of, you know, respite care. It's just all that stuff sort of mixed together in one. And uh, I'm excited to be there. We've got a plan for seeing that ministry flourish even beyond where it is right now. And so I'm going down there with a couple other people uh, to see how it's going. It's been a couple of years since I've been down there, so I'm super excited to get down there. But let's pray for that ministry. I want to talk about it a little bit more during the sermon time. But let's pray for the New Vision Children's Home. We have a child sponsorship program here for all the kids. It's something you can participate with online. Uh, and, you know, we lead trips down there on a regular basis. Of course, that's all been thrown uh, to the side with COVID. And we have a, a farm there uh, on the grounds that we're in the process of developing, creating local jobs and developing a, uh, a secure long-term economic funding engine for the children's home. So uh, let's pray over the New Vision Children's Home. Heavenly Father, thank you for, uh, for the ministry that's going on at New Vision. We thank you for Miss Gillette, uh, who is directing everything, and for Bishop Grant and his oversight. And Lord, just let your blessings be upon all the staff that are serving there, the, the house moms and uh, the farmers and uh, the office staff and everybody, all the things that they're doing, Lord. We pray your blessings upon them. And uh, Lord, also, we lift up all the kids that are there. Lord, we pray that they would grow in you. They would know who you are. They would get a new vision of what it means to live this life, not just victims of the evil of this world, but able to overcome and bring uh, your truth and your goodness to their nation. So Lord, we pray that you would heal and empower those kids to grow in you and be great representatives of you uh, in their nation as the years go by. So Lord, bless the New Vision Children's Home, provide for them financially, and help them to grab hold of the fullness of what you've got for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm so excited to be going over there again. Uh, and I'm also excited to be finishing up this sermon series that we're calling 2020 Hindsight. So basically in January of 2020, I did a five-week sermon series called 2020 Vision. I was super excited about it, you know, waiting a whole bunch of time to be able to talk about uh, our vision statement and plans for advancing ministry uh, and call it 2020 Vision because, you know, that's all kinds of fun. And, and then 2020 didn't go exactly according to plan. You know, it was pretty bizarre. Obviously, we're still in the middle of all of the pandemic issues with COVID and you know, with social justice issues, you know, it's not like that all has solved itself either. You know, there's all kinds of things going on, political issues, things that really have uh, kind of thrown our culture into a bit of a, a, an uproar, into some chaos. And what we want to do in 2020 hindsight, we're kind of looking back at the God things and making sure we haven't forgotten them. You know, looking at our vision statement, making sure we're on task with that, uh, looking at some faith goals that we have as a church, and then how to grab hold of those faith goals. And so we talked about our vision statement, reach up, rise up, reach out. This is who we are. And I, I should preach it every week until everybody knows exactly what the vision statement is, but it's reach up. A real relationship with the living God is available to you. So we want to connect with God. We do this in our worship time. You do this in your personal devotional time, studying the word, praying to the Lord. We want to connect with God. When, the, when it's the first connection with God, we call that uh, salvation, where you come to know the Lord, you ask for forgiveness, you pledge your life to walk with Him and to serve Him, and then He makes all 
all things new and you start a new life. You're born again, that starting of that process, you know, pray the sinner's prayer, they call it, and, uh, and start a life with Christ. That's the beginning of that connection. But then there's that progression of growth and staying connected with the Lord. And this is where the rise up part comes in. Rise up. A real relationship with the living God will change you. Have you ever had a relationship with someone who brought you up? Maybe a coach or a teacher or a family member or a friend who just having them around called you up into something better. Well, how much more would that be true if you have a real relationship with the creator of the universe who made you and has a purpose for your life that he's going to call you up out of all the garbage that's been holding you back and into who he truly meant for you to be, who he created you to be. So we want to rise up. A real relationship with the living God will change you and then reach out. A real relationship with the living God is a call to action. We're not just supposed to sit here and wait to go to heaven. We're not just supposed to try to enjoy life as best we can, but we have a purpose and a reason for being here and we are to bring the light into the the darkness. We're to help people who are hurting. We're to bring the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to this world. And you've got a piece of it. Each one of us has a piece of that. So a real relationship with the living God is a call to action. We want to serve. We want to go. We want to make this happen. And then last week, you know, last couple of weeks too, we've been talking about some faith goals. And then last week we talked about having, having mountain moving faith and some steps into being able to move mountains. Because, you know, you read those verses, it goes by so quick, and you're like, neat, and you're not really sure what to do. <laughs> so we're kind of fleshing that out a little bit. But last time we talked about some faith goals. First one, uh, we talked about increasing the church's love capacity. This was something that was part of our 2020 vision series two years ago. You know, a church is full when it can't love more people. And uh, we don't want to be full because we can't love more people. COVID has made that challenging, especially, you know, now in Cloquet, we're back with the mask thing, you know, and, uh, you know, Duluth, I know you got mask mandates, all that stuff. So we're <laughs> 2020, uh, 2020 hindsight, we're back into that sort of thing. But, you know, hallelujah, this too shall pass. Be nice, you know, have a good heart. If you want to know how to get through the COVID stuff as a, as a good Christian, I got three steps for you. Step one, rise above. You are a citizen of heaven. Step two, represent Jesus well. And then step three, rest in the Lord. Let, let your heart and your mind have peace. So there you go. Rise above, represent Jesus well, and then <laughs> rest in the Lord. That's the key. So faith goals, increase the church's love capacity. You know, we want to love people. Uh, we've got different things. You've got small groups who want to have, uh, you know, just a warm and inviting services. And then also, you know, hey, uh, sending the message out of the love of God through digital means, you know, uh, through TV, radio, YouTube, you know, Facebook, all the different ways that we send this stuff out. Daily devotions, our podcast, Chasing Squirrels with Pastor Mike. All these ways we're trying to, to share the love of God digitally as well as live and in person. Because we need both and they're, they're very important. So these are ways we're trying to improve, increase the church's love capacity. Then last time I talked about having more partners. At Good Hope Church, we have a progressive membership process. And uh, up the ladder a little ways is called partners. A partner with Good Hope Church. It's biblical language. You know, Paul talks about the people who partnered with him in the gospel, and we need people to partner with us at Good Hope Church. This is people who, uh, you know, who tithe to the church, who believe in the mission, who serve, they're here with us. We want that to increase. Last time we also talked about Lake Geneva Christian Center. The $6 million project from 2019 is now the same project, but it's going to cost $9.5 million. And so we made a $60,000 pledge from Good Hope Church to help with the building project at the camp. And, uh, you know, we're going to be trusting God and asking God if we should increase that because the expense has increased. We were hoping to do 1% of the project at $60,000. Uh, now 1% of the project is, you know, $95,000. That's a lot. But uh, we are believing God and trusting God, trying to see where we need to get with that. Our 
our overall missions giving, benevolence giving, you know, the children's home, foreign missions, missionaries, projects locally. Uh, last year was $179,000 and in 2021, our goal for 2022 is $200,000. Hallelujah for that. And then uh, we also talked about a couple of uh, steps in mountain moving faith. We'll cover that again when we get to it. But today I want to look at a few more faith goals. Uh, these are for 2022 and beyond. Uh, a lot of this is, is uh, things that I've wanted to see come to pass for years and still believe in God for it. Uh, and then we'll look at the last two steps to having a uh, faith that moves mountains. So let's pray. We'll get into it. So Heavenly Father, thank you for your holy scriptures. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Father, that you don't leave us here to just guess. But Lord, you guide us by your Holy Spirit when we open our hearts to you. And you guide us by your holy word when we submit to your truth. So Lord, please guide us. We open our hearts to you. We open our minds to you. Uh, Lord, show us something good. Father, each one, we all need something different. We're fighting different battles. We're going through different things. We just need something different from you. And so Lord, I pray by your Holy Spirit that you would meet us right now, each one, and give us exactly what we need. So Lord, do bless this time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So let's talk about some more faith goals. I got three of them. Number one that we're talking about this week. Of course, I got a million things. I can only share so many, uh, but here I'm gonna do three. Number one, end the loneliness epidemic through small groups and friendly services. <laughs> there are lonely people out there and God doesn't want us to be lonely. He wants, to be us, he wants us to be part of a fellowship. He wants us to be part of a family. He wants us to be together with brothers and sisters so we can walk through this treacherous life with the encouragement and strengthening of each other. And so we can end the loneliness epidemic through the ways that the scriptures teach us, which is to gather together and to be nice to each other. <laughs> it's pretty simple stuff. And the way that points itself out uh, it, for us is small groups. Through our Connections Ministry, we've got 12 small groups that are starting right now. You know, this is the season for getting them going. Most of them have already started, but you can jump in if you want to be part of one of those because how important is it to end the loneliness epidemic where you're disconnected, you're just going through life, you're sitting there, you know, alone. Maybe you've got people with you, but you still feel alone. We need to gather together and go there and encourage each other and end the loneliness epidemic. That happens through relationship relationship is built by meeting with people and a great way is through small groups, different types of life groups, different types of study groups, all kinds of different groups. We got 12 of them going right now. That represents 26 different people, facilitators who are helping these groups happen. Uh, you know, we got a bunch of different things going on, but what we need is a lot more than 12. You know what I mean? I know that other churches, there's small groups that don't even, they're not even associated with the church. Hallelujah for that. Uh, and then, of course, there's small groups that kind of are birthed out of these short-term groups that we have. I'm 100% happy with a group that meets for 10 years or however long. You know, that's awesome. Um, but there needs to be a way for people to come in and meet some people and maybe then get involved in a group like that. And that's our short-term groups. That's what the 12 are. And so we need, we need more than that. I'm, I'm believing God that 12 will be our new floor and that we'll be growing from there. How far can that get? I don't know. Let's, let's go for 20. Let's go for 20 small groups next fall. Let's believe God for that. And then I want to believe God for just friendliness to be hanging in the air at Good Hope Church when people come to our live services. You know, you can tell. Uh, I heard a, a pastor preaching. He said he was on vacation. He went to church and he said it was like visiting uh, you know, somebody's family meal. <laughs> like they, they were having their family meal and he's just like somehow ended up in the house and he's he, obviously interrupting what was going on and he was not, he didn't feel very welcome. And we don't want that to be the culture of Good Hope Church. I hope that's not the culture of any church out there. Uh, but we want to be friendly and encouraging and welcoming and just have that hanging in the air. So let's end the loneliness epidemic through small groups and friendly services. Goal number two, 
I want us, Good Hope Church, to take the gospel message to challenging locations near us. So, New Vision Children's Home, Christiana, Jamaica, we've got missions projects that we're supporting all around the world on, you know, I suppose every continent but Antarctica, you know, and we got uh, all kinds of things going on that we're supporting. But guess what? Uh, Minnesota needs Jesus too. And so we have what we call our campus model. So we want to reach uh, challenging locations near us with the gospel through our campus model. Let me just tell you about this a little bit. So I started in ministry. Last time we talked about, you know, some of my uh, early ministry experiences. And the, the first major ministry assignment I had was to plant a church in Big Fork, Minnesota. Go Huskies, love Big Fork, come on. Uh, and I found out that there was lots of opportunity, but very little resource. So there was, you know, people to talk to about Jesus. There was open doors, friendly people, encouraging people, people that were happy. Oh, you want to do something good? Uh, yeah, come on, let's go. You know, there, there was encouragement and opportunity and it was beautiful, but there was no money. There was no one to guide me to learn how to do things well. I had no idea about best practices and ministry stuff. And blah, you know, I just had no idea what was going on. Uh, and then no one to help. And I ended up having to do a lot of things I wasn't very good at and neglecting things that I was truly called to. Um, you know, so I'm trying to figure out our financial statements and, you know, what kind of insurance we should have and how to fix, you know, different maintenance things that I have no clue about. And then I'm neglecting, you know, meeting with people, encouraging and praying for people. I'm neglecting uh, sermon prep and, uh, you know, I'm neglecting the prayer and the ministry of the word because I'm doing stuff I'm not good at. And, and that was not good. And, so there's all these opportunities in these difficult places. Two places that we've engaged in right now are Ball Club Minnesota on the Leech Lake Reservation, Eagles Landing, beautiful church there, beautiful people there, and uh, transitioning from a pastor who been there for over a decade uh, into now not really knowing what's going on and not having any resources, talking about closing the church, different things like that. I'm like, no, let's not close the church. Let's work together. So we picked them up as a missions campus. So now they're part of Good Hope Church as a, a missions campus over at Eagles Landing in Ball Club, Minnesota. If you have a heart for native ministry and for the Leech Lake Reservation, especially that part of it, you know, it's big reservation. So, you know, like Walker might be a little bit that's farther away, you know, oh man, we need some good stuff going on in Walker. But, uh, you know, up in Ball Club, Bina, that area, um, if, if that's something that's on your heart, you talk to me, Pastor Mike at goodhope.ag. You shoot me an email because we need your help. I'm serious about that. So uh, let me know. But the idea is let's make sure that, uh, that Ball Club doesn't need to figure out the insurance stuff and the budget stuff and, you know, all these different uh, administrative things. And let's, let's do all that for them so that the pastors who are there, the people who are serving God can just go straight out and do the, do the ministry, you know, and also have a bit of a financial support network behind them. So this is, they need some support. They need some help. And uh, it's unrealistic to think that a church in ball club is going to bring in $200,000 a year and have all these ministries going on and be able to pay people. It, it, hallelujah, if that happens, that'd be great. But uh, it's unrealistic to expect that in the short term. Um, and then also in Morgan Park, we have our campus in Morgan Park that shut down when COVID happened. And uh, then we had a, a leadership transition our campus pastor transitioned out and so now we have no one to go there and you know so we haven't restarted since covid but our heart is for west duluth as well and that is a difficult place just drive around west duluth drive around morgan park how many churches do you see how many thriving churches are in west duluth i mean there's some good stuff going on man hallelujah for that but there's more need than there is good stuff going on so we want to reach into west duluth and i could see five or six different campuses 
And so then we have, here's the deal. We have a central organization of Good Hope Church that provides for all of that structure underneath that girds up and empowers the ministers to go minister, to, to preach the word, to pray with people, meet people, encourage people to be part of the community. And then, you know, the, they don't have to figure out the budget. They don't have to figure out, I mean, they got to be smart financially, but they, uh, they don't have to do the paperwork part of it. They don't have to figure out all of the administrative things. They don't have to worry about best practices. We can provide all of that, all the structures, kids church check-in systems, you know, uh, computer stuff, all the whole thing. We can provide all of that. Just go love those people and preach the word. You know, that uh, that's the idea is to create a support system through the central organization and then be able to create ministry. And here's the, the other piece that I think is cool. We're a large organization, large, uh, it's not just me that works at Good Hope Church. I'll put it that way. We have about a dozen staff here, like from part-time to full-time. Maybe it's about seven FTE, something like that. But, you know, the, uh, the reality is we could have someone who is in West Duluth getting half their salary from the ministry that's there and half their salary from the central organization as they serve in another capacity. Let's say maintenance. You know, somebody can get paid for taking care of the buildings that we have in the different campuses, and they can also get paid for being the campus pastor in their location, get a full-time salary, and not have to take vacation time to go to a conference. So anyway, hopefully you're catching that. But the goal, and this has been my dream for a long time, the goal is to take the gospel message to challenging locations near us through our campus model. Then we got the farm at New Vision. So again, I'm going there to Jamaica next Tuesday, you know, this coming Tuesday. Very excited about that. And I want to overcome the codependent missions ministry model. So here's the codependent missions ministry model. Let me just, this is my phraseology. So, you know, bear with me. But here's the deal. Uh, if I got a bunch of church people and I tell them, oh no, horrible things are happening, send money, it's going to get better, then they're going to get excited and they're going to be like, oh, we don't want horrible things to happen and they're going to want to send money. But here's the deal. If I need horrible things to be happening in order to motivate my group to care, then I need them to stay in a bad situation and to stay needing us. It's codependent missions ministry model. Instead, what we want to do is empower these uh ministries to be self-sufficient. And the great thing about the children's home in Christiana, Jamaica, is they have a farm. They got like 25 acres of farmland that are uh, developable that would, if in full production, would provide maybe 10, 12 local jobs and pay all of the expenses of the children's home, replacing our entire child sponsorship program with the funding that comes from the farm. And that would then allow them to be completely financially independent, be the head, not the tail. They won't need us at all. And then, then we win. We don't win by me to, oh, the need is so great. Let's have the need not be great anymore and them not need us. Let's do that. We do that through creating an economic uh, engine that provides long-term financial stability for ministries in other countries. And so that's the farm development at the New Vision Children's Home. Again, don't have a whole lot of time to talk about the minutia, but I'm excited to be going there and, and uh, working through that. So these are three pretty significant goals. End the loneliness epidemic through small groups and friendly services. Take the gospel message to challenging locations near us through our campus model. And then uh, create sustainable economic models for missions in other countries, you know, starting with the farm at the New Vision Children's Home and then reproducing that to other places. These are challenging things. Big goals. So we need mountain moving faith to have this happen. Because it's not just going to happen because you're like, oh, that'd be neat. Let's write it on our website. It'll just happen. It's not going to happen unless the power of God comes and the effort of God's people meet the power of God. And then these things will happen. So how do we have mountain moving faith? Let's read again Mark 
11, 22 through 25. We read last time, Jesus talking about moving mountains. He says this, Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. All right, mountain moving faith. Last week, we talked about two steps into having mountain moving faith because again, it's neat to read these verses and to be all excited. I'm gonna move a mountain. And then it doesn't happen. You get all discouraged. So how do we actually put this into practice? I got four steps. Last week, we talked about two of them. We talked about starting where you are. (laughs) Start where you're at. Don't just think, you know, let's, uh, you know, let's, Bring the gospel to two billion people. Yeah, bring the gospel to one person. Start where you're at. (laughs) You know, I started with cleaning the church. That was my first assignment as a ministry person. You know, I volunteered to clean the church for the church I was attending. After that, I taught Sunday school. You know, elementary boys Sunday school. Like, that's, start where you're at. Just get the ball rolling. Mountain moving faith starts with moving a little bit, you know, a spoonful of dirt. Mountain moving faith begins with just starting where you're at. So that's step one. Step two is persevere in faith. Be faithful through it all. Because here's the deal. The mountain doesn't just move, you know, like I'm going to believe for four seconds and then the mountain is going to move. Like hallelujah when that happens. But I tell you what, most of the time it is a life struggle. The apostle Paul didn't just become the apostle Paul and see the gospel go out into the nations around Uh, Jerusalem and Judea just in one day. It it didn't work like that. You got to persevere through the hard times. You got to persevere in your own personal spiritual growth and development, development, your ministry gifts. You got to persevere in in all of those areas. And then as time goes on, you see that the mountain begins to move. This week, we'll do steps three and four. Step three to having mountain moving faith is this. Remove the things that block your miracle. If you want to move the mountain, you got to remove the things that stop you from moving the mountain. You have to remove the things that block you getting your miracle. We just read one in Mark eleven twenty five. 25, it says, And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Having our sins forgiven is a miracle. For a lot of us, that's a mountain moving miracle. You know, like, hallelujah, I'm born again. I'm made new. My sins are forgiven. I've been redeemed. I'm walking with God. It's a life change. And it says here that something that can block that is not forgiving others. When you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. If you don't forgive others, it blocks the miracle of redemption. So we don't want to have things blocking the miracle. You got to forgive people. You also have to treat people right. So another thing you might have to remove is if you don't treat people right, it can hinder your prayers. Let's go to... 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. It says this, Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. So what is it saying there? It's saying, okay, you gotta, husbands, you got to treat your wives right. You got to treat them with respect. You've got to be considerate with them. Yeah, you might be stronger and be able to beat her up, but if you do that, you're failing God and not only have you done something wrong, but it is going to hinder your prayers. It is going to block your miracle. So you have to treat people right. Obviously, this is talking about husbands treating their wives right with respect and uh, and consideration. Um, But it also, you know, this is about treating everybody right. 
If you don't treat people right, that can block your miracle. You got something in your heart that is handicapping your ability to grab hold of the power of God. So forgive people, treat people right. Remove the things that block your miracle. Here's the next one. Don't just do what you want. You got to seek the will of God. James 4.3 says this. He's talking about things that block miracles, block the power of God. He says, and when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You know, Jesus said, ask and, and, you know, and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. He's saying, ask and you'll receive. And sometimes people ask and they don't receive. And so James says, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. If you have a, a desire, like I want a Lamborghini, Lord, I need, how much does a Lamborghini cost? A million dollars? I don't know how much. I bet you could buy one for a million dollars. So like, I need a million dollars for a Lamborghini. You know, like, is God gonna answer that prayer? I do this big capital campaign, Pastor Mike's Lamborghini campaign. Is that million dollars gonna come in? I sure hope not. I hope you're smarter than that. <laughs> but uh, what if I said we need a million dollars so that we can uh, build a facility that is going to uh, bring the gospel to a whole new generation of people. And we had this beautiful picture of what was going to happen. And I say, I need a million dollars. Might it be that then we can raise a million dollars for that purpose? Well, for sure. The day will come, presumably, when we need a building addition or we need to move to a different location where we can build a, a bigger building. And then I'm going to need more than a million dollars, you know, for that to happen. The church is going to need more than that. And it's appropriate to ask for that when the need is real. But if it's just a selfish need, you got no reason to believe God's going to answer that selfish need. You know, we need to put God's kingdom first. It was a, one of the life verses for me is Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33 is just a beautiful, beautiful verse. And this is Jesus seek, speaking and he says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. So when you seek the kingdom of God, then the, what do I, I'm going to eat? What am I going to wear? You know, how my basic needs going to be met? Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness first and you get those things as well. Sometimes we block the miracle through pure selfishness because what we want is just something for us. It's not about God's kingdom. It's not about God's righteousness. It's not about advancing the kingdom of God. It's about what I want and then you don't receive and then you feel disillusioned. Well, that selfishness is blocking your miracle. Another one. You got to stay connected. You got to abide in the vine. Let's go to... Uh, John chapter 15, hugely important stuff. John 15, 5, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I got this one wrong, man. I got, I got this one wrong. I was like, as a new believer, you know, I didn't specifically say this, but this kind of indicates where I was at. Uh, Basically, the heart behind what I was doing for the Lord was, thank you, Jesus, for dying for me on the cross. You've done enough for me. You just sit tight. I'm going to do some stuff for you, and I'm going to come back later and let you know how it went. So just sit tight. And I went to go do stuff for Jesus by myself. That's dumb. You got to abide in the vine. You got to stay connected. Jesus says, I'm the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I found out my own effort, my own strength, my own ideas, uh, my own work was not going to do anything. It wasn't going to accomplish anything. This is actually true. Apart from me, you can do nothing. But if we stay connected with the Lord, we're hearing from God on the direction to go. Our heart is drawing closer and closer to God's heart. We're abiding in the vine. Then we begin to bear fruit for the kingdom of God. That's another way of saying the mountain begins to move. We need to trust in his strength. Let's go back to Mark, this time chapter 9. Mark 9, 29, talking about Trusting in the strength of God. 
here. You may know the story of the boy possessed by an evil spirit and the disciples can't cast it out. Jesus comes, he casts it out. It's a big process. You can read about that chapter nine in Mark. But then afterwards, the disciples are asking him, hey, well, how come it didn't work for us? How come we couldn't get the miracle? How come we couldn't drive out the demon? Jesus says in verse 29, this kind can come out only by prayer. And the footnote, some manuscripts, prayer and fasting. What does that mean? What that means is you need to be truly connected with the power of God in order to, in order to overcome certain things. This come, comes out, kind comes out only by prayer. Maybe it said prayer and fasting. I think that seems reasonable to me. It means that when you're deeply connected to God, you can access the power of God more so than if you're not deeply connected with God. And so it blocks the miracle when we're not deeply connected with God. Got a couple nice ideas. You went to a conference and they told you to say something in prayer, so you say that. And that maybe that you know, has some positive effect, but you're not going to get as far as you could get that you would if you were deeply connected with the power of God, abiding in the vine day by day, receiving of the power and the goodness of God, and then bearing fruit for the kingdom of God. We must stay connected and trust in God's strength. So it's just some quick examples of things that can block your miracle. What else might be blocking your miracle? Seek the Lord on that. There are things that can block the miracle. All kinds of different things. So those three examples, you know, forgive people, treat them right. Don't make it about you. You got to put God king, God's kingdom first. And then staying connected with the Lord and trusting in his strength rather than trying to do it yourself. So you got to remove the things that block the miracle. So start where you're at. Persevere in faith. Be faithful through it all. Remove the things that block the miracle. And then step four is receive the miracle. <laughs> This one, I had no clue about this. And uh, I finally uh, learned about it and it was extremely helpful. So Mark eleven twenty four. 24, it's a very interesting verse. It says, you know, we read this earlier. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Some people don't like this verse, but here it is in the Bible. Jesus said it. Whatever you ask for in prayer, He's talking about mountain moving faith. It's that same section. You know, it's, it's, it's right there in how to move mountains. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. So he's saying, believe, you know, assume it, assume the miracle, grab a hold of it, you know, receive like a, a receiver in the NFL, you know, like there's, there's defensive backs, you know, pulling on this arm and you got to receive the ball. You're going to take it no matter what. You want to catch that ball, even though there's all this stuff going on, you're running hundred miles an hour and you just whoop, catch the ball. You receive it. You got to fight to take it. Now, this verse has been maybe used improperly in certain circumstances. Here's the key to understanding this. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. The key is make sure that it's God's will. You don't just get to pick. Like, I don't get to pick. I want to fly like Superman. I'm going to believe that I receive it and then I'll be able to fly like Superman. It's not going to happen. There's no promise in the Bible that I can fly like Superman. But what are some promises in the Bible that I can stand on? You know, there are incredible promises in the Bible. We'll talk about the promise of forgiveness of sins and redemption here in a little bit. Did Jesus die for you? Does he want you to be free from the past and step into a new life? That seems like a mountain that cannot be moved. But let me tell you, if you believe it, you can receive it and it will be yours and you can have new life. It has to be God's will. Remember the joke years and years ago, I heard this joke about a guy drowning in a flood. He was a Christian. You know, Christians can sometimes act a little weird. And uh, there was the, the, the police came by and they said, you know, hey, you've been, uh, you've been watching. There's a flood warning, a flash flood's coming. You gotta, you gotta get out of your house. And the guy said, hey, I'm trusting in Jesus. I'm trusting in the Lord. He's gonna take care of me. And so the police are like, okay, but you gotta get out of your house. <laughs> like, I'm trusting God. Okay, so they left. 
Then the water started to rise and a guy in a canoe who was taken off from his house was like, hey man, jump in, let's get out of here. He's like, no man, I'm good, thank you. The, uh, the Lord is gonna rescue me. And then uh, the water's up to, the, to his neck and a boat comes by, you know, motorboat. And uh, says, come on, hey, let's get out of here. He's like, no, I'm trusting in Jesus. The Lord's gonna rescue me. And then the water keeps rising. It's up to the top of his house. He's standing on the, the peak of the roof. And a helicopter comes by, throws a rope down. Hey, you know, a big ladder. Come on, let's go. And the guy's like, no, God is going to rescue me. And then the helicopter flies away and then the water goes up and the guy drowns. And then he shows up in heaven. And he's like, because, you know, even if you're dumb, you, st- <laughs> you trust in Jesus, you still go to heaven. Uh, he says, hey. How come you didn't rescue me? I was testifying to all those people. You're going to rescue me. And God says, well, who do you think sent the, the people to warn you and the canoe and the boat and the helicopter? Who do you think sent that? And he's like, oh, okay. Well, you, you, you were rescuing me, but I wouldn't receive it. I wouldn't take the provision. So that's that joke. I also think, you know, there's an old psalm, you know, our cup runneth over. I believe our cup will run over in time, but it's up to us how big of a cup we want to hold out. You know, hold out a little thimble and your cup is going to run over. You're never going to have much. If you want to receive a a mountain moving miracle, you got to hold out a bigger cup. You got to believe God for more. And then the example I mentioned earlier of believe that you have received. I think the best example of that is believing that you have received redemption through Christ. Because if you don't believe that you deserve it, if you don't believe God can forgive you, if you don't believe God can give you a new life and put you on a different path and make you part of the solution instead of part of the problem, if you don't believe God can heal your heart and your jaded anger and that you can't get out of the hole that you're in and God can't help you out of it, if you believe that God can't help you, then you're not going to get help from God because you don't have the faith to receive it. But I don't care who you are what you've done and what you've been through, if you believe that God has forgiven you and you put your faith in Christ and you believe that you're stepping into new life, you're born again, you're going to start this off fresh and new and you're going to overcome this time. If you believe that, you can receive it and you will have it and you can go forward in it. So believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Just make sure it's the will of God. We're going to receive communion. I encourage you to partake with me. Um, If you have some bread, if you have some juice. I heard a a guy basically, I don't tell a personal story. People have had powerful moments receiving communion with me in this respect on the CW, off of YouTube. So I encourage you to participate. You don't have to be part of the church. You know, we don't worry about stuff like that. The thing that matters is you make this real between you and God. This is about honoring the Lord Jesus for what he did, dying on the cross and redeeming us. We are to remember what he has done and not forget. And so we receive Holy Communion once a month. We've been talking about mountain moving faith, talking about goals for the church. Let me tell you about the greatest miracle. The greatest miracle is redemption. It's about the individual receiving the forgiveness of God and new life. And it is the blood of Christ that makes that possible. By his blood, we are forgiven. And by his stripes, his broken body, we are healed. And so you can be made new and step into a new life having your the, the, uh, uh, the identity of the past taken away. I'm this loser. I'm this broken person. That, that I'm this one who doesn't deserve. You can have that identity taken away in Christ and step into new life. 
you don't know that kind of relationship with Jesus, where he is your savior, he's the one who saved you. He's the one who redeemed you. He's the one who loves you and sacrificed for you, and now you're free. If you don't, if you don't understand that, I want you to pray with me as we receive Holy Communion. You can receive communion or not, but what you need to do is pray what in church circles they call the sinner's prayer. Um, funny story, as a, as a new pastor, I, I'm like looking through the Bible trying to find the sinner's prayer. I couldn't find it, so I didn't really know what they were talking about because I just basically knew the Bible because uh, I didn't run in church circles much. But what it is is repent and follow me. It's praying a prayer of repentance, coming to God, and then making the commitment to follow Christ. You do that, you grab in, you grab a hold of redemption if you believe and receive. So let's receive communion if you're a believer. You know, pray with me and let's celebrate what Christ has done for us. If you're just starting that faith journey, pray with me and, and let's get this thing started. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your, your goodness and your great plan of redemption. Thank you that you do not reject those who fail and who make mistakes, who hurt others and who do not uh, grab hold of the plan that you've got, but walk in rebellion, who, uh, who just mess everything up. Lord, you do not destroy and cast us away, but you redeem us. Today is the day of salvation. Lord, let us take advantage of the opportunity we have before the time is up. So Lord, we thank you that your body was broken, that you took that scourging, that you were beaten in our place so that we could be healed. Thank you, Lord, that your blood was shed. The wages of sin is death. The destructive power of sin needs to be destroyed and us uh, and your kingdom set free. But Lord, then all of us are in trouble because we've all sinned and fallen short of your glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for redeeming us by taking the bullet for us, by stepping into the punishment for us and taking it so that we could take hold of new life, forgiven and free, walking with you and being part of your goodness and your light and sharing that love and mercy with this world. So... This is for you. If, if it's time for you to start a relationship with Jesus, just pray something along these lines. And if you're re-upping your faith, do the same thing. Heavenly Father, thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for sending your Son to die on the cross for my sins. I confess my sin before you and ask for forgiveness. Lord, wash me clean. Help me to walk in your ways. I pledge my life to you to serve you and to walk with you. Thank you for making me new. Thank you for making me born again. Thank you for giving me new life. Let me walk in your ways, receive of your spirit, empowered by you into a new life. And say, thank you, Lord, for your goodness. I believe and I receive. Now let's honor the Lord Jesus by receiving Holy Communion together. This is the body of Christ, which was broken for you. And this is the blood of Christ, which was shed for you. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. Thank you, Lord, for the love you have for us. And I pray, Lord, for each one that we would know your love, that we would grab hold of new life, and that we would walk in your ways. Open up our eyes, give us vision, let us grab hold of your truth. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Well, hey, so glad you're here. God bless you from all of us at Good Hope Church to you and yours. God bless. Have a wonderful day.